Persona 4. Ooh, here we are in. What do I even need to say at this point? This game has spawned so many adaptations and spin-offs that it basically dwarfs the rest of the series. But popularity does not necessarily make the game great. Now one must ask themselves, how does it actually compare with the rest of the Persona series? And well, let me just play a few of the openings for you and let's see if you can notice any sort of tonal shift. I love that opening. So as you can see, this game is definitely a bit more lighthearted than its predecessors. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. For now, let's just dive in and examine the story of Persona 4. Our game opens with us being confronted by, who else but Igor, this time hanging out in one bitchin' ride. He and his new side piece Margaret greet the protagonist of this tale, a boy by the name of Silent Howard, born with the quiet reason of Larry, the childlike humor of Curly, and the authority and hair of Moe. He is the stooge lost to time. Igor, as he tends to do, offers you his services before sending you on your way. Our game truly begins, as most do, with shameless advertisement. You are leaving your home in some large city to visit the rural town of Inaba, where you'll be living for the next year. After a long train ride, you arrive and are greeted by your relatives who you will be staying with. First, you meet your uncle, a man named Ryotaro Dojima. And behind him is... This here's my daughter. Come on, Nanako. Introduce yourself to your cousin. <laughs> Hello. In any case, it's off to see your new home, but first you need to stop for gas. Does it surprise a city boy to see how little there is out here? There's so little to do, I'm sure you'll get bored fast. Well, that was pointless. But you do eventually arrive home, where Dojima is promptly called into work, leaving you and Nanako alone together. You'd like to strike up a conversation, but unfortunately Silent Protagonist Syndrome is a powerful affliction. In any case, Nanako turns on the TV to a news report. It appears some scandal is rocking the area as some politician ended up cheating on his wife. How pointless. That night, you have a strange dream of long hallways and fog and combat tutorials. In any event, it's a new day in a new town. Time to see what your school is like. I hear most of these Persona protagonists get some pretty foxy ladies as their homeroom teacher. <laughs> first things first, just because it's spring doesn't mean you can swoon over each other like love-struck baboons. Long as I'm around, you students are going to be pure as the driven snow. Ugh. In any case, school is uneventful, but before you get to leave, an announcement comes over the PA. It seems some sort of incident involving the police happened near the school. They advise that you don't go anywhere near it. Two of the girls who sit near you, named Chie Satanaka and Yukiko Amagi, offer to walk home with you. As you're exiting, a pale boy with 
dead eyes, asks Yukiko out, to which she bluntly refuses. Well, that was probably pointless too, right? But moving past that, you make your way home with the inquisitive duo, when you come across a police line. It seems like there was a dead body found in the area, and not only that, it was found in a very strange place, hanging from a TV antenna above one of the houses. It would also appear that your uncle, a detective, is working on this case right now. It's an eerie sounding case. The three of you decide to go your separate ways and quickly head home. That night, the news reports on the incident. It seems that the victim was one of the women involved in the scandal that was broadcast last night. But, more importantly, advertising. <gasps> oh, it's Juness! At Juness, every day is Customer Appreciation Day. Come see for yourself and get in touch with our products. Every day's great at your Juness. Every day is great at your Juness. On your way to school the next day, you finally decide to help that loser who's been constantly injuring himself. As thanks, after school he offers to take you out for some steak. Who said steak?! And Chie tags along. While you're out with the pair, you meet a girl named Saki Konishi, who apparently Yosuke has a crush on. Neat. Chie also decides to share with you a rumor that's been going throughout the school. Apparently, if you look into a TV while well, it's turned off on a rainy night, Exactly at midnight, you'll see your soulmate. That night, the news is still covering the mysterious death from the day before. They have an interview with the girl who found the body, and they do a great job disguising who it is. For privacy's sake, let's call her Lisa S. No, that's too obvious. Uh, let's say L. Simpson. In any event, midnight soon arrives. You might as well check out that rumor. Whatever that was, you, uh, you'd you better check with Yosuke and Chie tomorrow to see if they had anything similar. They both agree that they saw some sort of image on their screen, but as for the whole TV sucking you inside, they're skeptical. To prove their point, you three head to the TV section at Junez, where, obviously, you can still stick your head inside of the TV. Chie and Yosuke, borrowing from your stoogely powers, react accordingly, and you all fall inside the TV. Wait! What? The 
world inside appears to be a TV studio? Veiled in a thick fog. There also doesn't appear to be a way back out. At least, not where you came from. Your only real option is to walk in one direction and hope to come across an exit somewhere. You wander aimlessly for a while until you arrive at a room. The room is eerie. Identical posters line the walls, but the face from each poster has been ripped off, and a noose hangs in the center of the room. Finding only a dead end and the eerie atmosphere of the room, your group decide to head back to where you came from. Once you get back, though, you find a presence is waiting for you. A dark and sinister aura emanates from it as it slowly approaches your group. It's a bear. He, uh, it, asks you to leave and casually mentions that people have been thrown in here and that it's dangerous. You don't really have any idea what he's talking about, but he summons a stack of TVs and pushes you inside before you can really question him. It's tough to say what exactly happened to you all, so you all decide to put it to the back of your mind and just go home and rest. It appears that girl, Saki Konishi, died last night. But to make matters more shocking, she died in a manner eerily similar to the woman who died just a few days prior. Her body was found hanging from a telephone pole. Yosuke confronts both Yu and Chie about it. He claims he saw Saki on the Midnight Channel last night, and suggests that maybe, just maybe, people who appear on that channel are the people who die. It seems ludicrous, but then again, after seeing that world inside the TV and that bear claiming that people were thrown inside of it, Yosuke makes a decision. He wants to investigate that world inside of the TV, for Saki's sake. He rushes off to Junez, and you and Chie quickly scramble after him. Once there, you find him with a golf club and a length of rope. He plans on going inside the TV to investigate while leaving a rope as a sort of lifeline for him to get out. You and him enter the TV, leaving the rope behind with Chie to hold on to. That weird bear is still there, and this time he gets mad at you. He claims that you must be the one that are throwing people inside of here. You both brush the bear's accusations off, but there's something to it. Maybe Yosuke's right. Maybe this TV is connected to that midnight channel. Maybe the people who died were killed in here. Maybe when they were thrown in, with no means of escape, they somehow died. That bear is still pestering you though, so Yosuke naturally rips his head off. To reveal nothing. Nothing? Nothing? Nothing, tra la la? Well, apparently we're not questioning that and you decide to team up with the bear. He introduces himself as Teddy. He shows you to the place where the last person, Saki, fell in. You arrive in a neighborhood that looks exactly like the shopping district from Inaba. To make matters even eerier, the liquor store that Saki's parents run has a strange portal in front of it. You go to enter when suddenly... Uh-huh. Uh...
you've once again awakened to a new power, and once again you decide not to really question it. You enter the liquor store and begin to hear voices. It sounds like Saki's father, and it sounds like he's berating her. It seems that she's been under a lot of flack from her family and neighbors about working at Junez, a superstore which is driving the local stores out of business. As you go in a little further, you also hear Saki's voice herself. She professes her hatred for Yosuke, how he always got on her nerves, how little she cared for her job and all the things around her. Yosuke can hardly believe it, but he's cut off by yet another voice. Yosuke's voice? You turn around to find, indeed, another Yosuke. This doppelganger Yosuke claims that this is all an act. Yosuke never really cared for Saki or any of the people of this town for that matter. This is some shithole way out in the sticks, and his life is so boring because of it. But finally, a TV world that he can go into. Nay, he could even become a hero for exploring this place. Something interesting that he could finally do. And the death of Saki Konishi was the perfect excuse to do it. Yosuke vehemently denies these accusations. This imposter is not, cannot, be him. <laughs> That's right! Say it again! You're not me! You're nothing like me! <laughs> yeah, that's right. I am me now. I'm not you anymore, see? The shadow, thrown into a rage by its existence being denied, attacks you. It's a pretty straightforward fight of attacking and guarding, and you bring it down without very much trouble. After you defeat it, the shadow remains. It is a part of Yosuke, one he's suppressed and hidden away, but one that he needs to accept is a part of him. Yosuke, having known all along that these were deep down his thoughts as well accepts the shadow as a part of himself. As a result of facing oneself, Yosuke is granted the power of Persona. Just like that, you have your first party member, the eternal wingman Yosuke. In any event, you've managed to find out a little bit more about this place. Considering how tied everything was to Saki Konishi, it's hard to believe that this place is not somehow connected to her murder. You leave the TV, promising Teddy that you'll return to help solve the case. As you leave, you find a rather distraught Chie. She runs off in tears, and you both agree to apologize the next day. 